pessimists in the world, man. Real talk. Now if tomorrow was a guarantee I wouldn't be the same man that you're about to see Take you on a literary mission My goal as a musician is to teach you all to listen The words between the lines when read are sure to get inside your head Feed you where the price is due to make you feel better than designer threads And look better too And I ain't talking about your clothes, I'm talking about your open eyelids And how they view the scene in front of you, now make your moves but move with caution, death visits very often Daily stories about the murders, the suicides and abortion If you don't watch your steps, you could end up in a coffin And me, I'm claustrophobic So every day when I wake up to life, I'ma love and hold it To La Soul, Renaissance like Overflow and Cup Project We here in the building with Joni Centeo and Eric Andrade Every Sunday, 4 to 8 at musicfiend.com uh, We have a special guest on the phone right now a uh, producer of amazing film I had the opportunity to see twice, once in New Bedford and once at UMass Dartmouth, uh, Cabral Easter. We are on the line with Val Lopes. Val, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello. How you doing, brother? Fine, and you? I'm good, man. Thank you for calling in, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you for this opportunity also. All right. I'm, I'm excited to uh, see that the, the movement is continuing to go on. Your film inspired me seeing that. Um, and I'm glad to have an opportunity to bring it forward a little bit more. Hopefully more people will catch on to what you're doing. I think what you're doing is really powerful. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, brother. Um, so before we get into uh, an interview uh, really about um, what's going on and what you've been doing in your process and some, get some thoughts on some of the things that are going on, uh, we have a trailer for the second part of the film. Do you want to um, give the people a little idea of what we're going to see in this trailer? I was asking, uh, before we get into uh, some details about yeah. wh what you've been doing, if uh, you could uh, lead us into this trailer that we're going to show for... Oh, okay, yeah, that's the trailer of the second part of the documentary. I don't know if people saw already the, the first one that is a little bit different. This part is more uh, concerning uh, the people who live with Cabral. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm working at, on it, actually, and that's just an introduction to, to the project. Okay, cool, cool. For those people that don't know, uh, we're on the line with uh, Val Lopes. He's a producer um, from, from Europe. You actually live in Luxembourg? Yeah, in Luxembourg I live. That's where I was born. And uh, of Cape Verdean origin. And he's been working on a project on Amilcar Cabral, who is a, a, a leader in, in the world, actually. I, I was going to label it and just put it in terms of Africa, um, but his, his philosophy and his efforts and his work... Uh, very influential. I learned a great deal from watching the first part of the film, so I'm looking forward to the second part. Uh, what we're going to watch right now is, a, is the trailer for the second part of the film. Um, so let's just uh, let that run. Nous avons 
pouvons en outre adapter l'évolution de la lutte aux conditions culturelles de notre peuple. Nous avons assimilé tout ce qui était assimilable de l'expérience des autres pour le développement de la Un mouvement de libération nationale dans l'étape présente de notre histoire. Yeah. Yeah. All right, all right. So, man, yeah, I'm excited that, to see that the, the story doesn't end. I, I left watching the first one. Um, so inspired and uh, I didn't really want it to end. It made me asking a lot of questions and thinking a, a lot about what's going on in the world today and what role I'm playing in, in um, continuing the message of those that came before us and also the, that, that message of, you know, making the world a better place. Um, so I want to thank you first and foremost f uh, for the efforts you put forth in uh, putting this film together. Um, thank you also for this opportunity to share it. I, I think Cabral is very important uh, all over the place, everywhere, for all the Pan-Africans all around the world. He was a, a friend of most of them, of most of these leaders of the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and he's very important, really, to uh, to learn what his message was and his theories, and that's the purpose of this film. Yes, yes. So how did you get involved in, in, in this journey to, to bring the story to life? I, f I feel like... You know, what is it about this particular story that is so important to you? And why do you feel like this is an, a message that people need to, to, to hear? I think Cabral was very epic. His whole life was very epic. And we as Africans, we don't have enough heroes. I was born in, in, in Europe, in Luxembourg, and I had all these, in school, I had all these influences of white people constantly, what they did all the good things that they did and they never talked about the bad things that they did and every time you would hear uh, something negative it was more related to me and my race so uh, i needed to find positive things for me also that i can bring forward and I, that i can share when uh, when i'm with my when i'm surrounded of white people and they come with their own things i have to defend myself also constantly life is just is a constant battle And I think Cabral was the best person I found for that because he, he, he had the same struggle at that time and he developed a theory and an ideology about, around everything that he was doing and he shared it with us through, through his books and these books were some, somewhere gaining dust put somewhere in corners and nobody is paying, was paying attention to what he said and what he did. And over time I started... Over the time, I started finding audio recordings and video footage and a lot of stuff related to him about about him him with Malcolm X, him with with uh, he he met the Pope, he met all the greatest leaders in this world, and and I I just thought you should bring that forward and share it with with others. Definitely, I think that it's so important to tap back into the history that we have and understand ourselves culturally. Like as you were saying. The, the importance of having heroes and people that you can identify yourself with culturally or in, as an individual is so important for the, the development of the self and the sense of self. And I think that the reality is that as you, as you were talking about your struggles, uh, I think that that struggle is such a common struggle. And it, it's ironic. It's not as an American. I, I thought that would be an American struggle, like, you know, growing up in America, um, being um, Cape Verdean American and Irish American and dealing with. Uh, identity crisis based on those same struggles you talked about. Here I am growing up here, you're growing up in Luxembourg, and it's the same story. And I, I feel like that it's the same story uh, so many places that we go. And that, un unfortunately, many of the heroes that we, we should be knowing about, many people don't have uh, that much uh, e public education, at least, or, or popular education of those individuals. So. Yeah. Yeah, those, those, those even individuals left us really manuals of how, how we can emancipate, how we can, we can fight this, this fight, and how we can, we can develop our own uh, cultural, gain our own culture back, because we lost our culture through slavery, through colonialism, through imperialism, and we need to reconstruct all these, 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 these strength that we had before because we are st still weakened by all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why I told I should work on that. And I think um, Afro-Americans should do the same about their leaders. 
go out and, and get everything that Malcolm X said, everything that Martin Luther King said, or, or even Du Bois at the beginning, all these people, bring all everything that they said together, put it in new media, put it, bring it to people in new ways, and because people don't feel like reading books anymore, and these are heavy books, not just in, in terms of physical weight. I really mean, really mean heavy in terms of content. And me, social media and video and everything is easier to digest, and that's what makes uh, these kind of things uh, go, go forward, these kind of films. That's why I made it uh, in video instead of starting to write a book, and uh, that's why I made the app also, the iPhone and iPad app on Amilcar Cabral, that everybody can download. Unfortunately, it's limited at the moment because it's still Portuguese, but people can download it now. It's free, and uh, in a few weeks or months, it will be updated to the English version, and, and they get through the update. They can read everything and see Cabral and listen to his speeches and uh, have somebody contributing to their own emancipation and to gain their identity back. So basically, uh, that's going to be on the YouTube site or on the Cabralista um, website dot com. Yeah, you ju just go to Cabralista dot com, and you can find everything there. The link to the iTunes store where you can download the app for free and uh, all information about the, the film. Unfortunately, the DVD will not come out yet. But I'm I was touring here the last uh, two months ago when when I met you. I was touring here in universities, and I had some some screenings now also, and I will come back for others, absolutely, that's absolutely sure. And it's what, what I think is very interesting is it's not just uh, Cape Verdeans here in America that are interested in Cabral, really, uh, it's all kind of people. A few weeks ago I was screening it in, in uh, North Carolina, and the audience was uh, no Cape Verdeans at all, and uh, people liked it, and I think that's, that proves the, the universality of Cabral's message, because if you take his speeches, you remove the word caper, and you add Vietnam or any other struggle that they fought at that time, you, 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 you will see the same message. It's, it's the same for every, everybody. It's mm -hmm. about human rights. It's about uh, the anonymous fighters on the field that were there all the time to, to help us de develop. It's about Black Panthers. It's about all, all these great uh, achievers who helped us emancipate physically, but we are forgetting to continue the fight and to use what they said to get our mental emancipation. That's where we failed, and that's where we need to look back to them and continue the struggle. Definitely, definitely. I definitely agree with that. And I think also in terms of the, this, the specific tools that the film like highlighted to me in terms of the importance of culture and, um, and, and, and changing things, and um, I, I think that... That's one of the biggest areas where uh, people are, are, are culturally uh, brainwashed and, and, and to not knowing who they are and not knowing themselves. And I think that a, as an artist and as an activist, seeing the film and seeing um, the movement and, uh, and even just how you're uh, applying yourself with the video and using the video. Because the video, for those that haven't seen the film, you've got to check it out. I know it's uh, showing in New York, correct? Yeah. When is it shown in New York? Exact date yet, but it will be shown in, in New York before I leave. That's the last screening I'm gonna have here. Where is that screening gonna be? Uh, I don't know the, the exact uh, date yet. Okay. But I give you the information as soon as possible. Okay. So just for those of you out there watching and tuning in, um, basically hit up cabralista.com. You see the website right underneath, uh, uh, right above Val's name. Actually, uh, go there. Their contact information is there. Um, stay updated with it, but the film is definitely something that's very uh, inspiring. Um, it's very well shot. It's very artistic. Uh, I think that was what impressed me the most. As you said, a lot of times uh, information, uh, for lack of a, a, a better term, if, when it's not put out in a sexy way, people don't pay attention to it. Yeah, exactly. And um, exactly. I think that that's one of the strengths of, of the film, and it also it's also the strength of some of those movements you you, you mentioned in in the past. They they changed the cultural climate where it was actually this was. Um, people adapt to the, uh, the the room temperature of the society you place, and I feel like artists and and people that are aware have a great strength and ability to to, to create social change. Um, you know, we see it in the past in the histories of all those people you spoke about, and even right now, like with the efforts we're doing right now, we may not see it, but you know, I I, I truly feel that your film is going to do a great deal to 
to wake up a lot of people and re-Africanize them and, and, and awake them themselves to their human self. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the goal of the film is to create really a movement around around uh, around Cabral and not just Cabral's ideologies, around African ideologies, because we need that. We need to defend ourselves from the image that they uh, put on us, the, the, the institutionalized image that, I, that they are still putting on us. And, and an example of, his, it, it, of it is the fact that they were saying that he was a communist and a Marxist just because he inspired on, on, on Karl Marx, the, 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 the part of Karl Marx that said that you should, that you should help others. Let me simplify it to the simple point. And uh, everybody at that time who was a little bit uh, less capitalist, who was trying to help those who don't have as much, those who cannot uh, survive in a, in a totally uh, financially meritocratic world, everybody who was doing that at that time had this stamp on his, on his forehead, communist or Marxist. And the best way to defend that those leaders especially in the case of Cabral, who wrote like a dozen of books and who, who developed a real theory ab around him, he did exactly the same that Fidel Castro did, or the same that uh, Karl Marx did, or the same, same that uh, Charles de Gaulle did in France. And those people are called uh, uh, Castrist in, in, in the case of people who follow Fidel Castro, or Marxist in the case of people who follow Karl Marx, or or Gaullist in the case of uh, Charles de Gaulle's followers. So we, as followers of Cabral, we should say that we are Cabralists. Because if we say that, they cannot put another stamp on our forehead. If, mm. we, if somebody comes to you and says, you are a communist, just defend yourself with your own definition of what you are. And that's the goal of this field. That's such a powerful statement right there, in terms of like we, we get trapped into the box of of uh, the definitions of the society around us and how they how they want to frame and define us. And I think exactly. it, it ties into also the importance of telling our own story and documenting our own story and our own culture and how important that is. Um, so I, I, I greatly thank you for your efforts. I, I look forward to thank seeing uh, part two. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will share it with you as soon as, uh, as it's finished. What are some things that the community out there can do to help uh, in this movement? Sorry? Uh, uh, it, what are the things that people in the community that are listening that want to get involved or support or, or connect with uh, this movement of this uh, trilogy? Um, I know that with everything, any project that takes a lot of work to get something like this done and a lot of research, um, are there uh, any things that you, in particular, that you're needing resources or, or support with right now in this project? I'm making this uh, all by myself. I, I come here by myself. I do everything and the video and, and the sound and because I'm audio engineer. So most of, 95% of the work is done by myself and the research also. So if somebody has anything, any ideas, anything that he wants to share with me, just go to the website cabralista.com. Click on contact, send me an email, and, and I will get back to them. And I, I tell everybody to join the movement on Facebook also, to like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Cabralista, and to, to read the quotes of Cabral that are there, to look at the photos of what we did until now, because it's just the beginning. Every, everything is just starting. And a very important date is going to be the next 20th January, the release of the second part, and it's a day where we want to focus on creating the movement, really. I was just, this first part was just testing every, everything, and the second part of the trilogy is really going to be the confirmation of everything that we are doing. Word up, word up. I'm looking forward to that, brother. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Val. We, we were just on the phone with Val Lopes, director of the trilogy, Cabral Lista. Um, check him out on Facebook, uh, Cabral Lista. Um, and cabralista.com. Um, they're going to be showing the film for those of you in New York. They're going to be showing it in New York, so stay tuned and, and plug into that Facebook page and, the, and their website for information on where they're going to be showing it. It's definitely a film you don't want to miss. Um, it will be out in the future, but if you get an opportunity, I guarantee you it will inspire you. It was so inspiring, I went twice, and if I could, I would go again. Um, I can't speak highly enough of it. So thank you, Val. Thank you also. Eh? All right, take care. Yeah, bye.
We're going to get back into the music. We are at La Soul Renaissance Overflowing Cup Project. Your host, Eric Andre with Joni Centeno. I can never say never, never say never, never say never, never, never. I can never say never, never say never, never say never, never, never. I can never say never, never say never. Never say 